Richard. <laughs> it's Keith Jones. I like your outfit, man. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. I'm just getting ready to go teach you, teach a, a gratitude and, and exercise class today. So um, that's great. All right, different gear. So uh, <laughs> out of the student tie into the workout gear, man. That's the way, buddy. Seamless. Seamless, seamless, man. And, you know, one of the things that I kind of want to talk to you about is what is a, res a, a discovery in your adult years that have that has informed or helped your wellness practice? Oh, um, my gosh. That, that you just didn't know about as a kid. So the way that it came up was a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to um, our friend Tim and uh, and Pat and oh no, Tim and Alex is who, who were here. And the question became, I was reading somewhere about, uh, you know, the importance of inc in inclusion, the importance of inclusion and making uh, opportunities available to everyone. So we have a just and equitable, equitable you know, society. And what I was sharing with those guys was, is that, you know, a lot of times, you know, as a society, we stereotype people and assume that they wouldn't like something based on their culture. But from my own experience, uh, me not liking something is based more to my exposure to it. So for example, for the longest time, I didn't understand why people enjoyed water sports, you know, and so, or why they enjoy, you know, winter sports like skiing or snowboarding. And the reason I didn't, that I didn't understand it uh, was because I wasn't exposed to it. And from like Tim's perspective, who comes from a different background, or from Alex's perspective, you know, I was able to, to share with them, like, you know, here's kind of what, you know, people may assume about somebody who happens, their biological race happens to be African American. They don't ski, they don't swim, those are not sports that they like, or activities they like and they're not good at it, or nature or hiking. And it wouldn't be further from the truth. Like, uh, you know me, I'm snowboarding and on the slopes every year. And with your inspiration and support, you know, I began swimming, you know, 12 years ago. And so I'm into water sports and wakeboarding too. And so you'd make that assumption based on the color of my skin that that's something that I'm not interested in, but that's not the case. I just hadn't been exposed to it. So I don't know how amazing it, it can be and how it also contributes to my personal wellness. And so if I feel that way, that people may have me wrong, uh, then I also have to consider how many people I have had wrong based on how they look uh, or what stereotypes or generalizations about them, you know, a group of people has been. So it's been really helpful to inform me staying open, staying compassionate, and, uh, and just understanding that people may not engage in certain activities is not because they can't do it or not interested in it, it's more about uh, exposure. So one of the things that with your help that I really want to get exposed to, because I know it supports wellness, is more, being more, uh, uh, have more experience in nature. And you've invited me to your home in Sedona several times. And if it weren't for COVID, we would have done some kind of natural park uh, experience over, you know, in 2020. So I really want to make that part of my wellness practice and experience moving forward. And when, before this, if I'd ever thought about hiking, dude, I don't want to get dirty. That's not my thing. <laughs> I, I, and when you have a stepfather who's yelling at you for your one, your one, you know, your one time park experience, get over here, get that tent up, get those poles up. And he had never had experience with, with tent or a pole himself, yeah. you know? So all my experiences with being outdoors, you know, is, is PSTD related. <laughs> I mean, you know that. And then I meet you and, and our friend Pete and some other people, and they're telling me how great nature is. I'm like, really? I had no idea. But it's because I wasn't properly exposed to it. So, I, you know, just taking me to maybe five or 10 minutes, man, if you could just share a little bit about some discovery that you have made, you know, that you weren't exposed to as a kid. Well, it's still making them, you know. All yeah, of the I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all those things that you talk about are true, that you cannot really have a feel for anything or sympathy for it or an empathy with those who participate in it without having some exposure to it, right? Mm -hmm. So there are some things that are, you know, that are probably too repugnant for most people to try, like eating a, 
a live snake. I mean, that's done in certain parts of the world, but uh, you know, there are, there, there are some things that are probably you're never going to like, even if you are exposed to it. But the argument is always try it or have a look at it or explore it and t- check it out. Um, the, 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 that is the main argument in my mind for travel, for international travel. If we could get kids to be, be on the road in their gap year between you know, high school and college for a year, if they're not doing some sort of civil service commitment, which I'm a big advocate for, either the military for a year or two or civil service for a year or two, mandatory every American kid. Even if there's a disability, there has to be an accommodation for that disability, but that, that should happen. And I would think that the more exposure you have to a different culture, you know, if, you, <laughs> if, if you're in India, and you think you're going to get a burger and sleep in a nice spot, you know, if you're traveling on the cheap, you're going to have a hard time. But what you learn from that experience, not only is character building, but it's eye opening. And you realize after so much of this, how much we have in common after so much travel, you realize that humans are pretty much the same. There's a little bit of fringe on the outside where we're different, but we're pretty much the same. So in terms of health, in terms of what I've discovered that has helped me a great deal that I didn't know anything about that I found out on my own the hard way, I would say there are three things. And they each fall into a category that I believe uh, are the three categories of of overall health. One is is actual physicality, the idea of exercise, uh, fitness with resistance training and with aerobics and cardio work. Then there's a nutritional component. And then there's a, I would call it a psychological, emotional well-being component. I didn't know any any of the stuff in those three. I mean, I played college ball. I played hockey as well. And, and, you know, there was none of the emphasis that you have now on integration of those systems or fitness involving emotional component, nothing like that. So what I've learned in my own as an old guy, and I'm continuing to learn and continuing to try to perfect and learn more about, number one, in terms of the physicality, there must be resistance training in your life. And that has to be some form of weightlifting or weight training. That's something that was foreign to me. Um, I did a lot of weight training when I played football. And as soon as the season was over, I went back to the mashed potatoes and, and, and sloth, thinking that I earned it. I could take a, take a break and then come back stronger, fatter, and healthier than the next year. Totally wrong. But the point is, RT, resistance training, is a definite component. That's number one. Number two, on the tr- nutritional side, I learned two things that are really important. Zero starch. Get away from anything that's white. That's an overgeneralization, but a good general rule. And two, I believe strongly in intermittent fasting. I don't eat ever until noon. If I'm up at four o'clock in the morning and I'm running, or if I'm skiing or whatever, I do not eat until noon. Uh, that's, uh, that's very, very important to me. And then I only have one other meal, which is usually six-ish, and that's it. Maybe a handful of nuts at three. So intermittent fasting for the nutrition component and, and starch avoidance, those are the two things for, for that, um, uh, that exposure that I had to learn on my own. And then thirdly, and probably the biggest category that I'm still learning and still really enjoying exploring is that there is an enormous, enormous emotional payoff for being outdoors, even if you're only walking in a park barefoot. It is a, the, more, the more natural exposure you can have and, and the, the stronger the, the, the avoidance of other people is in that component, uh, the more payback you get out of, it, out of it. So if you can spend a week in the wilderness with just a backpack, man, oh man, you'll come back a different person. I have done that many times. I camp on my own a lot. I, I take off uh, with friends or with my girl and we go up to places and we're isolated for a long time. And I love that. It's fabulous. It's amazing what you learn in nature. If you are just there in nature with a backpack, that's it. Not a TV not the iPhone, not any of that crap electronically, nothing, just you and trees and the forest or the desert and the animals and learning the ways of that natural cycle that you're part of, but you don't even know you're part of it. And then lastly, with that psychological component comes meditation. And meditation is something not necessarily sitting cross-legged with the palms up, 
in a in a, in a, a specific mudra, hand hand uh, holding. It's it's more about uh, a mindlessness where you're focused on relaxing and just being. You're getting into a place where no American ever plays, except for those people who meditate, and that is between the thoughts. You are spending time between the thoughts and you're just being. You're not doing, you're letting everything go, and it's totally okay. You're totally floating. Okay, that's it for me. Dude, Rick, I love it, man. I love it. You know, I just want to piggyback on that, on your last one specifically, uh, last two, the nature, rooting myself in that, and I'm committed to doing that because uh, I know that's going to open up another dimension for me in terms of just my consciousness and being my best self. And, uh, and, and, and the practice part of it, man, for me has been a discovery that I made in my adult life that would have served me a lot when I was younger. Yeah. So again, I think that when we expose ourselves to these new activities and ways of being, it makes us more loving, kinder, more compassionate and empathetic. Uh, it increases our capacity to be giving too. So man, we can just end right there on that note, man. <laughs> I just want I just want you to know I love you. And a lot of the discoveries that I've made in my adult life has been through our friendship and through, you know, your guide. And so we invite everyone who, you know, listens to our podcast. And these are just a few of our discoveries that we made later in life. Uh, you know, and we invite you, you know, to share what your yours are. You know, they they can be very Absolutely. Love to hear. Yeah. Love to hear. Man, thanks, Rick. Hey, thanks, Keith. Really appreciate your time. I love you. I love you too, Rick. Thank you. Bye -bye.